where Bank of America is now, there was at one time a very old building that was called the Mountain Industries. And the Mountain Industries was a nonprofit organization that was dedicated to encouraging the production of local craft. And it was one of the earliest such organizations in Western North Carolina. It was kind of like the Allen Stand shop uh, that was the antecedent to the Folk Art Center. We had an equally important one, Mountain Industries, here in Tryon at that location. And so they not only sold fine craft, they also sold fine art. And we know that George Aid, for example, sold at that location. Uh, he was also important because George Aid uh, really ran the only art academy of the early 20th century in Tryon. And uh, that was in then his studio up by Pinecrest. And this then was a highly unusual town. I mean, there, there was no art education in the schools at that time. And so young people who were lucky enough to live in Tryon could go over and attend the academy at um, George Aid's studio. And people would come from out of town. And so that kind of professional art activity naturally attracted buyers to this community. Now another place that I think is real interesting we need to keep in mind as part of the heritage of Tryon's art is the Rock House Gallery that is now for sale. Um, it, was, it was right next to the Oak Hall Hotel where the uh, condos are now. And it was right across then from the depot. So people who were coming out of the depot and going up to Oak Hall or all those boarding houses on Melrose went right by the rock house. It was, a, it was originally built to be a sales office for a real estate development in the 20s that failed. And so uh, in the depths of the depression again in 1934, uh, Tryon being such a magnet for art, um, Mrs. B. King Cooper acquired that place and made it into a studio. It has wonderful natural light. And this is an example of one of her paintings painted at the Rock House. And I think what's especially interesting about this painting, and I'm really grateful to you to bring this today, Noel, is this is actually a scene in Tryon from the porch of the Rock House Gallery. And the way she artfully uses the power poles there, and some of the mundane things going on, the truck and all. She was a wonderful artist. Uh, so she painted there prolifically. She did portraits, landscapes, and she also exhibited the work of important artists who she knew from out of town. Her first show was of a New York artist whose name I forget. It's in my book. Um, but uh, she cut a really wide swath. And she was around here for a long time. And so uh, people remember her. And Mrs. B. King Cooper actually was the first person in Tryon to have a commercial gallery dedicated to fine art. At the time it opened, from what I can tell, in 1934, there was not a single other commercial gallery dedicated to fine art in the entire state of North Carolina. Then along came the Fine Arts Center, Tryon Fine Arts Center. Uh, you know, this was a magnet for artists, but so many of the activities were scattered around at various institutions and everything. So, um, Really, uh, in the 60s, that movement started to uh, get a better facility for the performing arts and to also have a place for exhibiting uh, visual arts. And so the community built, without any public money, a um, center that was really quite remarkable uh, for a community this size. 
which still operates as Tryon Fine Arts Center, and uh, that incorporated Tryon Arts and Crafts. And so Tryon Arts and Crafts, as well as Tryon Painters and Sculptors, uh, had many shows there starting from the very beginning. And the list of those people who exhibited there would be way too long uh, to try to do. And I'm hoping that somebody will uh, go ahead and get into the archives of that institution and document all the shows that have happened over the years. Um, it's, it's really been uh, one of the reasons that Tryon's so special is that there's always been something on exhibit there uh, in art and craft. Uh, now, of course, oh, and then there was the Art Palette next door. Remember the Arts Palette? Uh, where artists exhibited there. And so, uh, really, in, say, modern times, uh, the Tryon Fine Arts Center and their galleries have been a stalwart. The upstairs gallery uh, came about uh, in the 70s, I guess. And I came here in 1983 when it was still upstairs um, over there on Trade Street. And I can't tell you how really important um, the upstairs gallery has been um, over these years uh, in, in, in positioning Tryon as an important art place. You know, its original reason for being was that um, avant-garde art uh, that was not necessarily commercially saleable, didn't have a really great place to go. And so it was founded with the sense that it would not be a for-profit place, but that it would be a um, kind of low overhead, informal uh, space where the more cutting edge, avant-garde, um, emerging artists' work uh, could be shown. And it was certainly very successful in that way, and again was a forerunner of what was to come because at the time the upstairs was founded in the 1970s, no such thing existed anywhere in this region, anywhere in Asheville or Charlotte or uh, upstate South Carolina, no such place existed at the time it was founded. And of course, since then, uh, in many of those places that exist, now uh, galleries of that type, and its uh, mission has evolved into something, I guess you'd say, more mainstream. Uh, but uh, uh, that nonprofit organization was very important in, in our, our history and remains so today. And then we had uh, Tokpella Gallery, Dale McIntyre's gallery. Uh, there's a very distinguished history of artists uh, who opened their own galleries. Mrs. B. King Cooper, who we've discussed already, uh, showed her work as well as uh, those of other artists. Uh, Tok Pella did that. Actually, Mary Schwader, who was a por porcelain uh, artisan, uh, showed her work next door. And the Nelsons are showing their own work as well as other fine arts of first-rate um, stature. So it, really what we're seeing here is a continuation of uh, what has been going on for a hundred years or so.